All right, guys. Uh, good morning once again. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, what is this? Uh, your third week of the Bible College. It's starting with the third week, isn't it? Okay. How has it been so far? The two weeks has gone by. Good. Are you learning something exciting, interesting, busy? Is it going to keep you? Has assignments started already? No, not yet. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. Still have people joining in. Okay. It's Ab Abu Bakr says interesting. That's awesome. Cool. I guess. Uh, so let's get started. Can I request one of us to uh, lead us in prayer before we get started, please? Anybody, let's go for it. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the beautiful day and for this beautiful morning. Lord, right now we are in the class of praise and worship. I believe, as Pastor says, every word, it gets deep into our heart and we will show it in our action and praise you above all else. Give us the understanding, give us the wisdom that we need and give us the strength and everything that we need today. We thank you for the amazing grace and amazing love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. All right. Um, well, let's do a quick recap uh, of what we learned last week and we'll move on. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Great. So we started off with chapter one, uh, introduction, and which. Uh, uh, speaks about, which gives us a little bit of the definitions of for praise and worship. And that's where we started. Right? We saw a little bit of what it is. Uh, is worship really just the time spent singing uh, in the church or is it a genre of music? Uh, we saw some of the definitions that uh, we've given uh, to worship ourselves, isn't it? Uh, or what we've made of uh, this thing that we call worship. Okay. Um, some of the interesting uh, quotes uh, we, we saw on page uh, three, actually. So one of the definitions said, uh, one of the quotes says, uh, the second one, acknowledging that someone or something else is greater, worth more, and by consequence to be obeyed, feared, and adored. Worship is a sign that in giving myself completely to someone or something, I want to be mastered by it. I think that's uh, my personal favorite of the lot. Uh, so we saw a bunch of definitions, right? Uh, like that of different people uh, on the subject. And one of the last uh, definitions by Bob Coughlin, uh, we kind of broke the definition down to truly understand what he is actually saying. So his, um, his definition uh, was, Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people to his self-revelation that exalts God's glory in Christ in our minds, affections and wills in the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm so kind of glad that we broke it down because uh, if I didn't know that Bob Coughlin wrote it, uh, it would, it almost seems like Paul was writing it to the church of Romans. You know what I'm saying? It is just so deep and so rich in theology and understanding and wisdom and knowledge. Uh, so uh, it's good. And I, I really hope that you guys had the time to, you know, once the class was done, uh, you had the time to reflect back on the notes and just to re-meditate and just to absorb everything that was kind of shared in the class. And uh, and if you didn't really have the time, I would, and for every subject actually, you know, try and do that, you know, try and re-meditate, go back and reflect on the notes of, uh, you know, what was taught. And I'm sure that's going to be very helpful, okay? Um, so that was, uh, page four in your notes, the last quote of understanding uh, worship, one of the definitions of worship. And then very briefly, we uh, understood, we looked at the definition for praise. 
uh, which simply means to commend, to applaud, to express approval or admiration. That those are all the dictionary meanings, right? Uh, and then we see that the praise is the verbal declaration, okay, verbal declaration of adoration. Uh, I just quick uh, on a side note, if you have the means, uh, uh, you know, if, to take a printout of these notes, kind of like these spiral binds, if you can, if you have the means and if you can do that, uh, you know, I see as much as I like the soft copies and whatnot, I'm the old school kind of guy. I like to underline, you know, use the yellow color, orange color, green color, blue color, everything, underline it, highlight it. Uh, it's going to uh, you know, help you, uh, you know, in the long run. Okay. So praise is the verbal declaration of adoration and thanksgiving for what God has done and for what he has promised to do. Uh, and then we quickly looked at uh, praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. Right? Praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. And we saw that a sacrifice should cost us something. And then how praise doesn't necessarily, most of the time, doesn't have to cost us. Because and one of the things we saw was that we praise our friends, we praise our uh, you know, um, our relatives, our family members for doing a good job, our colleagues, our uh, fellow classmates, uh, you know, say, hey, good job, that is awesome, keep it up, you know, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But when life gets hard, when uh, when life doesn't go as you want it to go or as you plan to go, and when, it doesn't, when you can't make sense of things that are happening around you, and and then you pause and you say, God, I don't know what is happening around me, but I still choose to praise you. That beautifully becomes an, an aroma, an incense of praise and, and of worship. Uh, so that, in Hebrews 13, 15, we see that, right? It's the fruit of our lips, isn't it? It becomes the fruit of our lips. Um, so, uh, yes, praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. Um I also teach worship ministry for the final years. And uh, one of the things you will eventually might learn it when you get to the third year, but one of the first uh, chapters is uh, we discuss on the altars of Abraham. Uh, the altars of Abraham is how Abraham was a man of altars, that he built altars and how altars in those days were known as a place of sacrifice. It's a place where death took place. It's a place where blood flu right if, if, uh, not flu it was flowing down flu okay good morning Roshan wake up <laughs> uh, it was a place of sacrifice it was a place of worship it was a place of adoration and everything that we you know claim worship to be uh, and Abraham would build altars um, and one of the key verses uh, that we will again keep looking at time and time again is Romans chapter 12 verse 1 okay in this course We'll be looking at that verse many, many times. But so here's the thing. God does not only expect us to build altars, but according to Romans 12, 1, he expects us to be on the altar. That is the living sacrifice, isn't it? Um, so, um, yeah, uh, so we look at, you know, when you'll eventually get to the final year, we look more into the altars of Abraham, okay? So that's uh, praise, which uh, is known as the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. Um, it involves giving up or taking on, giving up something that you have the right to and taking on something that you don't necessarily have to, okay? Sacrifice involves that. Sacrifice involves death. It would be death to comfort, self-pity, jealousy, lustful desires, etc., etc. And the list can go on and on. Right. So that is just a brief definition uh, of of praise. And then we quickly saw what are the differences between praise and worship. Right. Uh, praise can be corporate, while worship is more personal. Praise is always obvious. It's either seen or heard, but worship is not always evident, point three says, right? And praise 
3.4.3 is, is mostly horizontal in its purpose. We speak to one another. We encourage one another. Uh, we declare his praise to, for each other while worship is primarily vertical. It's between you and God. Amen. Uh, so those are all the things that we, uh, we covered in our first class of praise and worship. Okay. And um, I hope you could uh, take, uh, you know, take something new out of uh, your understanding of praise and worship and whatnot. Right? As, is everybody clear so far? Is everybody okay? Okay. All right, thank you, Anita. Yeah, I hope everybody else is doing well, doing okay. Uh, great, great, okay. So let's move on now. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna look at the Hebrew words for praise and worship. So from this chapter on, we are going to go a little bit more deeper and deeper into our understanding of praise and worship, okay? Um, let me go ahead and uh, share the screen. Great. Uh, is everybody able to see my screen? Yeah. Yes, boss. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, don't worry about the color of the notes and everything. Okay. Uh, it's the same thing. What's in your notes? So everything is the same. Okay. Um, so once again, uh, the definition of praise, like we've already learned, is to commend, to applaud, to express approval uh, or admiration. Uh, praise is a verbal declaration and everything. So we understand all of this definition, right, of what we just, uh, what we learned in the previous chapter. So with that understanding, uh, we're going to look at basically the seven Hebrew words for praise. And why seven Hebrew words? Why Hebrew words uh, at all? Right. Uh, See, so in, in the English language, uh, we and I feel uh, it might be just my opinion. We we are limited, uh, you know, in the way that we define a few things. Uh, for example, uh, you know, for the word love in English, we just have one word, and we use that for everything, right? And everyone, or uh, you know, I love Jesus. I love cheeseburgers. I love cheese pizzas. I love. Um, I love this person, I love that movie, we use one, right? But in ancient Greek, they used four different words to define love. Uh, you know, we, they had eros, philia, storge, agape, and all of that had different definition, different explanation for love. In actually, in modern Greek, they've added two more words for love. So in total, uh, ancient plus modern, there, is, there are six words for love in Greek. Um, so similarly, uh, you know, there are seven primary Hebrew words for praise. Okay, seven primary Hebrew words for praise. Uh, and they are, the first one is yada. And the second one is toda. And then you have halal. And this is my favorite, actually, shabach. Okay, you got to add some phlegm into it. <laughs> uh, Tahila, Barak, and Samar. Okay, what are they? Yada, Toda, Halel, Shabach, Tahila, Barak, and Zamar. So let's dive into it. The first one is Yada. Uh, well, let's call it as the hands of praise. Okay, hand. So yad means hand, a means cast out. Uh, and depending on the version, uh, the translation of the Bible that you use, it more or less, uh, it's mentioned around 120 more or less times in the Bible. Okay, and uh, the definition of this word yada means to give thanks, to Lord praise, 
to rever or worship with extended hands. Okay, to give thanks, the Lord prays to rever or worship with extended hands. Yada is a verb with a root meaning, the extended hand, to throw out the hand, to throw a stone or arrow. Okay, uh, Yada is also the same root word we get the name Judah from. Okay, it's like, oh yeah, they sound the same, you know. <laughs> Um, so once again, what is uh, quickly the definitions here? Uh, yada is a verb. Okay, that means it's an action. You have to do it with a root meaning to extend the extended hand, to throw out the hand, to throw a stone or arrow. Uh, in the, some of them even go to an extent and say it's extended hands, hands with the, your palms out, stretched upwards like this. Um, so the details in these definitions are incredible, uh, you know, because uh, the, the, the direction of how your palms should be facing is also mentioned in some in some definitions. I thought it was very interesting. Okay, so the hands of praise, um, uh, yada. Okay, so here are a few psalms for us. Um, once again, guys, if uh, if uh, you know. If any of us have uh, Bibles uh, ready in uh, different languages, and you know uh, that would be amazing for us to just read some of these scriptures in in our own language. Uh, I've, I and I just believe that there's something beautiful when that happens. Okay, uh, if you have a Hindi Bible, uh, Malayalam, Tamil, Kannada, uh, any of the African languages, uh, you know, uh, it'll be amazing. Okay, so. Uh, one of the scriptures here, it says, may the peoples praise you, yada, okay? Um, may the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. Um, that's the Psalm 67, verse 3. And all your work praise you, O Lord. All your work, all his creations praise you. Okay, your faithful people extol you. Uh, in God we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Okay, so imagine this: uh, these verses, the scriptures, right? In God we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name. We will we will praise him with our extended hands, okay, with our hands lifted up, your name for ever okay uh most scriptures okay these are all sc key scriptures for uh you know for yada okay uh, can one of us go to psalm 28 please psalm 28 i mean all of us go to psalm 28 <laughs> Okay, uh, let's, uh, can uh, one of us read verse 1 and verse 2, please? Okay, let me read. Yes, please. To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deep ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. Thank you. Uh, can the uh, same scripture be read in another language? Any other language, please? Can I read in Malayalam? Yes, please. Yehove Nyan in a Vulcha Big Shikino, and the Parea Ulove, Ni Kelka the Rikerde, Ni Minda the Rinetta, Nyan Kudil Irangunare Pole Aga the Ripantane, Nyan in the Kaigale Vishutha and Vishutha under Mandira Tinga Lake O Yerthi, the Northern Eleven Kimball, and the Yajnagal Shabdam Kilkin. Thank you. Nyan ended. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Two verses, right? Yeah, yeah, two verses, yeah. yeah. I, I read. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, anybody else uh, in yeah, the language? In Hindi? Sure, go ahead. Thank you, Aradhana. Thank you. So here we see the context uh, you know, that David is writing. It says, Psalm 28, it's a Psalm of David. He says, uh, to you, I call, okay, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. He's starting. This is this is a prayer. Okay, so keep that in mind. And going on, for if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down to the pit. So hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. As I lift my hands toward your most holy place, um, those words are so important. Like towards your most holy places. Now, again, um, what David is referring there is that he's lifting up his hands in the direction of the temple, and the most holy place is literally the holy of holies. And then we see that uh, being mentioned in. Um, if can we uh, go to First Kings, please? Just turn with me to First Kings. First Kings, chapter eight. I'm just going to read a couple of verses, but you know, um, as I, I would, I would love for you to just read this entire chapter. Uh, actually, especially from um, from chapter six, if you want to know about Solomon building the temple and whatnot. So, first Kings, uh, we'll go to chapter eight. Um, uh, we'll just quickly look at uh, verse twenty-two. It says, First Kings, chapter eight, verse twenty-two. Okay, it says, then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands toward heaven. Okay, spread out his hands towards heaven and said, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is one huge prayer that uh, Solomon makes and um, and which is why I'm, I wanna encourage you to read the entire chapter much later. But let's quickly go down to verse 38. Okay, same chapter, First Kings chapter eight, verse 38. It says, and when a prayer or plea is made by any of your people, Israel, each one aware of the afflictions of his own heart and spreading out his hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Okay, um, this Solomon has clearly learned about this from David. When David writes this out and say, okay, hear my cry for mercy as I lift my hands towards your holy place, towards your most holy place. Right? Are, are you guys with me? So there is this beautiful uh, you know, imagery of, of prayer, of supplication, a request for help. And um, it's the same chapter, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 38, Divya. Verse 38. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so as I was preparing, I just found this beautiful commentary. Uh, you know, uh, I post this whole thing in the chat section. Um, and I'll read it for us. Um, it's it's on Psalm 28, by the way. Okay, this whole commentary. Uh, he, uh, the, uh, the writer says, the words of prayer were accompanied by actions so that both mind and body were engaged in the ritual proceedings. The supplicant's hands were lifted and directed towards the holy place in a gesture typical of supplication in the Near East in general. 
It may be that the hands were raised in a gesture symbolizing the anticipation of receiving something in the hands, namely the divine response to prayer. Okay, yes, listen to those lines. It may be that the hands were raised in a gesture symbolizing the anticipation of receiving something in the hands, and namely the divine response to prayer. But the reference to the pit in verse 1 suggests an alternate symbolism. The psalmist is like one standing in the edge of the pit of danger, of death in danger, of falling in, and his hands are stretched out in desperation. If God would only answer his prayer, it would be as though he had taken his hands and rescued him from the threatening abyss. Um, it's such a uh, wonderful, uh, you know, commentary on, on, on the first two verses of Psalm 28 and the way we are looking at of just our hands being raised. Uh, right? Um, so awesome. Okay, let's uh, look at uh, another scriptures. Are you guys okay to read a lot of scriptures? This morning, or this very uh, the, the evening. <laughs> oh yeah, there there are a lot of songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one of uh, the next uh, scripture is Psalm sixty-three, verse four. Psalm sixty-three, verse four. Um, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name. I will lift up my hands. Okay, so now in this uh, context, we see that how praise is in parallel with lifting up the hands, or how the lifting up of the hands is in parallel with praise or, or, or blessing his name. Okay, once again, Psalm 63, verse 4 I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. Anybody in uh, any other languages, please? Shall I read in Tamil? Yes, please. In Jeevanulla Nalmatum, Nanu Maitudit, Mother Namate, Sali Kayedipin. Can you read that one more time? It's just so beautiful. In Jeevanulla Nalmatum, Nanu Maitudit, Mother Namate, Sali Kayedipin. Okay, guys, can we all just pause and just ponder on those words uh, and if we were to make this our prayer uh, like David is crying out I will praise you as long as I live uh, it's and then if you just go look at the introduction of this psalm right not just from verse one it like way on the top it says it's a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah, when he was in the wilderness, when he was running for his life. Um, so he doesn't know how long he's going to live. Maybe he just feels so hopeless, so low, uh, you know, in his spirit and whatnot. But there he says, I mean, the whole psalm is just beautiful. In a dry and weary land. So he's clearly in the wilderness. He's clearly in the desert. Okay. Where there is no water, my soul thirsts for you. I long for you. But even when my body needs all these things, when my body needs water and when my, when my body needs shade uh, and I'm trying to find a tree to hide, in verse 2 he says, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. How many of us can say those? You know, I have seen you, Lord. And I have beheld your beauty, your power, and your glory. And then he says, I will praise you as long as I live. No matter what my situation or what my circumstances, no matter how dry my surroundings are, no matter how hopeless my situation seems, um, I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Um, that ought to encourage us, isn't it? Amen. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's look at uh, let's go to Psalm one thirty four. Okay, Psalm one thirty four. 
Okay, I hope we are all there. Psalm 134. Uh, now, once again, if you notice the book of Psalms from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134, there are about 15 Psalms, right? From Psalm 120 to 134. And they are all labeled as the Song of Ascents. Song of Ascents. So basically it was, uh, you know, people from different towns coming into Jerusalem, ascending up the hill towards the temple. Uh, it, was, it was a celebration. It was a festival. Okay, it was a joyous occasion for people to ascend up the hill, uh, you know. Uh, um, so those, that's why in all these Psalms, and it's right after Psalm 119. Uh, Psalm 119 is one long uh, love poem to the uh, to God's word. And after that, from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134, we see it's uh, those are all the Psalms of uh, in a celebration festival, uh, inviting everybody. And this is the conclusion. So some of the scholars and the historians say this Psalm is like towards the end of the celebration. It's towards the end of the festival. Um, and the editor of the Psalms is so beautifully and strategically placed at that point. Uh, you know, it's just not there for, okay, Psalm 133 and then Psalm 134 and just moving on. No, but it's just so beautifully placed. Uh, it says, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who minister by night or who stand by night, uh, the translation says, um, which kind of entails that, okay, it's almost towards the end of the day. It's evening, okay, uh, and going into the dark. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. The context is very clear here. It's, it's, um, it's corporate worship. He, the psalmist is inviting uh, you know, everybody to lift their hands and, and praise him in his sanctuary. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Okay. Um, so, uh, another uh, commentary uh, that I came across was this beautiful. I'm going to put it in the chat section and uh, read it for us. Um, it says, um, Okay. Yeah, it says the time and place, especially the place, are plainly indicated. Uh, the occasion is a cultic one, evidently a service held at night, uh, not improbably at the Feast of the Tabernacles. It is, is it a priestly voice we hear urging the gathered people to praise Yahweh? They stand in the temple courts, ready to raise their hands toward the temple hallowed as the earthly dwelling place of Yahweh. Concerted praise of voices and hands will acknowledge God's power and their dependence on and commitment to God through the covenant. Okay, now I'm just going to leave that there. And uh, you can read it like a hundred times <laughs> just so you, you can absorb that whole thing. Uh, it, it's just such a powerful insight. Uh, it's just so beautiful, beautiful of Psalm 134. Um, I mean, who knew there's so many, so many things about just lifting our hands and praising him, isn't it? Uh, right. Are you guys with me? I, I lost. Uh... Yes. No. <laughs> Great, guys. I'm not going to go through all of the scriptures, key scriptures mentioned there. It's for you to go, you know, go through them and, uh, you know, and be blessed by them. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on. Um, the second word, the second Hebrew word is what we're going to call it as the expectation of praise, uh, which is toda. Okay. It again, comes from the same root word as yada. But what's the definitions? Okay. Extension of hands with thanks, uh, with thankfulness, thanksgiving, a confession, a sacrifice of praise. But here, here's where it gets a little different. Thanksgiving for things not yet received. 
okay? A thanksgiving for things not yet received. So uh, it's, again, it's the same posture of praise with your hands lifted up, with extended hands. But here you are giving thanks to the things that not, you've not yet received, for the blessings you have not received, etc. Okay, so that's Toda. Uh, so Toda comes from the same principle root word as Yada, but is more is used more specifically. Uh, Toda literally means an exp extension of the hand in adoration or acceptance. Okay. Um, Psalm, Psalm 56 verse 11 and 12 says, In God I, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you. Okay. And God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? And so therefore, I will render praises to you. Psalm 56 verse 12. Um, let's look at Psalm 141, Psalm 141 verse 2. I was reminded of another scripture, guys. Uh, you know, while you, while we, uh, once you reach Psalm 141, verse 2, keep your finger on it and uh, see if you can find the book of Habakkuk. Uh, this is another scripture that I wanted to mention for Yada. Um, I just forgot. I thought it's a beautiful imagery. Um, Okay, before we read from Psalm 141, uh, from, uh, if you can turn to the book of Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, uh, how, however you want to pronounce it. Okay, um, again, this, it's a very interesting chapter, uh, but I'm just going to read uh, one uh, verse. Okay, so, so Habakkuk here is painting this amazing uh, picture or uh, metaphorically he says uh, in verse 10 Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 10 he says the mountains saw you and uh, writhed torrents of water swept by the deep roared okay and lifted its waves on high the deep roared and lifted its waves on high and I know some of us might be thinking, okay, how is this related to the extended hands, yada, you know. Uh, but again, when you, uh, there's certain commentary. Now, Habakkuk is, again, metaphorically, you know, uh, painting a picture where the deep here is actually the ocean's deep, okay, uh, referring to the oceans and how deep they are. Uh, they were lifted, okay, they lift uh, the lifting up of the waves is like a symbol of lifting up of their hands, so to say. Uh, it's just a beautiful picture, isn't it? Uh, because one of the definitions we saw for Yada was a throwing of the stones, uh, you know, throwing or, or throwing of arrows. So, uh, I mean, just have to have that image of, you know, as just the throwing up praises on God is like, God, you're awesome you know you're magnificent uh, it's just sending our uh, arrows of praise you know towards him and just uh it's just a beautiful imagery uh because again one, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is hebrew originally was a pictorial language okay hebrew originally was a pictorial language so they would you know all of this was uh was like carved on stones uh you know like they draw images uh, I have a good 322. No, I think that might be a mistake, uh, Subhashish. I'm sorry, but uh, what I wanted to mention was uh, have a good 310. Uh, apologies. Because it ends in verse 19. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay, now uh, let's go to Psalm 141. Um, Psalm 141. Um, can someone read verse 1 and verse 2, please? I will. Oh Lord, I'm calling to you. Please hurry. 
Listen when I cry to you for help. Accept my prayer as an incense offered to you, and my upraised hands as an evening offering. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, right. So it says, "O Lord, I call to you. Come quickly to me." It's again a prayer there. Hear my voice when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense, uh, like fragrance, like intercession. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Um, now, much later uh, in different courses, in one of the courses, if not the Old Testament survey, uh, you will read, you will learn more about the sacrifices that was performed or practiced by uh, by the Jews in the book of Leviticus. Uh, you know, there was morning sacrifice, there was evening sacrifice that they had to do every day. And so David is referring to that, uh, the, those traditions, those practices is, uh, may my prayer be like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Such a beautiful imagery there, right? Um, let's read a couple more scriptures and then we'll move on. Um, Psalm 88. Let's go to Psalm 88. Psalm 88, verse 9. Someone, please. Psalms 88, verse 9. My eye has wasted away because of affliction. I have called upon you every day, O Lord. I have spread out my hands to you. Thank you, John. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I was thinking if we should uh, do one more scripture. Okay. Uh, okay. Because uh, we'll uh, move on because of time. Um, but again, we'll just go back home and uh, and I th I've I've corrected these scriptures in your notes. I think uh, hopefully so. But um, if not, I'll correct them and send it over to you guys. Okay. So uh, so this is the second Hebrew word that we, uh, that we just learned was uh, toda. The first one is yada. The second is toda, which is thanksgiving for uh, the things not yet received with the same intention to with extended hands. Okay. Um, and the third Hebrew word uh, is halal. And let's call it as the celebration of praise. Okay. Halal, again, without saying it's the root word where we get the word hallelujah from okay uh, so by definition means to shine to boast to make a show to rave to rejoice to be clamorously foolish to celebrate okay isn't it, it's awesome isn't it to to shine to boast to make a show uh, for our God to uh, to to rejoice, to celebrate Him, to celebrate His goodness and um, and whatnot, everything who He is and what He is to us. Okay, so it's mentioned more than more or less 160 times in the Bible. This word halal. Okay, a um, few scriptures for us. Let them praise. Halal, okay, means what? Let them make a show. Let them celebrate his name. Let them shine his name, okay? Let them boast his name. Let them celebrate his name with dancing and make music to him with timbers and harp. Uh, Psalm 22, uh, verse 22 says, I will praise God's name in a song. Psalm 109, verse 30 says, I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. Okay, I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. I will boast your name. I will, I will make your name shine. Okay, um, that's what's used there. Uh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
Okay, let everything that has breath, halal the Lord. Let everything cry out, hallelujah. Let everything worship him and celebrate for who he is, for he is good and his love endures forever. Amen. Amen. So that's the third Hebrew word, halal. Uh, and there are some of the key scriptures for us to uh, go back and read, uh, and which I encourage you to do so. Okay. Um, the next one is the shout of praise. So I'm just going to pause here. Uh, you know, we'll. Uh, pause here. We'll uh, go for our break and uh, we'll come back and resume the session. Okay, we have a couple more minutes, but does anybody have any questions? Uh, um, anybody would like to add anything to what we've just learned? Any insights that you could take off? I don't know whether it is a question or something that I want to add, but you mentioned that some words are used 160 times, 80 times in the Bible. Can I get a reference of everything? Like, what are those 80 things? Where are those words? <laughs> 160 times, where are those words? I just want to know if there is a way for that. Okay. Um. I mean, as much as possible, I've uh, mentioned just a few, like those key scriptures there, but... Um... Uh, if you can get your hands on this tool called the eSword, okay? uh, I, I use it a lot for my personal study. Uh, it's called eSword. It's a free software for Windows users and uh, not a free software for Apple users. Uh, you can download it. Uh, and, and so you can search for, you know, references like this, all the scriptures that uh, has, you know, and so you kind of get a list of it. So that's an easy way to do it. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else, guys, would like to add, uh, you know, your insights from just these two words? I know we've just three words that we've learned, but anything that kind of stood out to you? Um, Okay, I guess not. Uh, I will stop the recording now. And uh, okay, uh, please go for your break.